Yo, yo, what's, what's going on with you, bro? Uh, I mean, I thought, I thought, how many, how many months we back on? <laughs> oh, Jeff, to tell you, not even mention it, bro. It just kind of, <laughs> we, we, we just gonna upload and just continue on. You gotta be one of them, one of them friends. <laughs> when I see you, just like I see you saying. yesterday. That's how we gotta be, one of them friends, just like that. It's just like I see you yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> what's been going hey, on shit. though? Yeah, hey, shit, you know I got in on uh, Taco Tuesday. Oh, I hear that. How that was? Hey. Everything was tasty. Man, man, please. You need, hey, you need, to, you need to get out there and um, uh, with um, uh, girl, whatever. Had me down three tacos. Well, the first three tacos were free. Mm -hmm. What and is that? Three, three for one. Oh, really? What is that? Uh, Velvet Lounge. Okay, they had them little short tacos, soft ta soft shell. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah Velvet but Lounge. What I said in Lauderdale? Yeah, um, University. Okay. Mm -hmm. And on Tuesday, that'd be the deal? Yeah. I got to go check that out next Tuesday. Then. Yeah, okay. no, no, it'll work. It, it'll work. Yeah. yeah. That's good. That's, That's an so, enticing deal, though. First three yeah. free and three for, what, for three for one? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, I'll be on, I feel I'll in there, too, <laughs> You be on stage tonight in there, boy. I'm trying to tell you, but I had three. I had me three Long Islands, man. Shit, and three South. I was feeling good. <laughs> Surprise! You a surprise? We got you on tonight, then. Nah, nah. I know I had to come. I, I know I got to be to work tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> Shit, I do too. I feel you, bro. Definitely. Yeah. Man. So, man, <clears throat> what we waiting on the guests or what, whatever? All, all I want to say is. A lot of shit I, I've been wanting to talk about with wrestling now. Mm -hmm. I hate to say it, but I, I see myself 10 years is like those old coons that talking about wrestling wasn't the same as mm -hmm. it was back in the day. Oh, you see yourself being that guy? Yeah, because, man, it's... I'm not, I'm not excited. I'm like, I don't feel I'm missing nothing. Hey, hey, you you hit it from the head of shoe from the first um upload we had when you say independent wrestling is more exciting. The actual, you know, main event uh commercial wrestling. It, it's just right. you but you you know now you know better, basically. You know you can get a better experience going to see independent wrestlers who are hungry. You right there in front, no matter where you sit at, the the, the cost of getting unreasonable. You can talk to these people after the show, take pictures with them after the show. I mean, it's just a different experience. So you shoot, you just basically it make you look at wrestling different. I hey. And then with how they doing the storylines and stuff, they don't make it no better. And the decisions they starting to choose to make. Yo. Yo. Y'all don't know what happened. Well, I do know what happened. I got too much Wi-Fi power going on in my modem. I had to unplug my uh computer. <laughs> Wi-Fi. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, I better say, yeah. I, I, yeah, <laughs> bro, that was crazy. My bad, listeners. Mr. Ritz, Coach Ritz, you can hear us? Hello. Yes, sir. You hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Well, Yo, we got this Nick Ricks on the line. Hey, what's hey, going on, man? Man, man, hold on. This is we. Hey, we got to get him really in the discussion because man, this is yeah, most definitely. <laughs> yeah, this is Deal Field Beach High Legend, ladies and gentlemen. We got Nick Ricks on the line, uh, linebacker, football player, uh, IQ for the game, uh, one of the best defensive minds. That you can never meet or uh, even get a chance to talk to. <laughs> Accolades out the ass. Uh, high school, college. Nick Ritz, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Nick Ritz. I appreciate that. Appreciate hey, that, man. Hey, hey, that, that, that family, man. And let you know, bro. Yeah, we go way back. Yeah. Let you know on our thing right here. This your thing, now. You know, yeah. you speak your mind. You ain't got no whole nothing back. So just let everybody good, know. Man. Yeah, just let everybody know real, real quick. Who you is? <laughs> yeah, man, Nick Ricks, man, from uh, from Deerfield, man, born and raised my whole life. Um, played at Deerfield High School, uh, made all state. Uh, you know, had one of the best teams in Deerfield history. You know, we probably get into that another time. Um, yep. but yeah, played my college ball at Eastern Illinois. You know, um, ended up being a four year starter, All American. I ended up making the Hall of Fame in uh, 2012. 
Yeah. So, you know, that was a nice little moment for me, you know, kind of put my name in the record books, you know, for life. You know what I'm saying? That's, yes, that's kind of my, one of my goals was to, you know, go up there, you know, and go play fast and let them know where we're from and, and, and leave my mark there. So, you know, whenever I go back, whenever I have my kids and they go back, they're going to know their daddy was up there and did his thing. Yeah, man. All right. So so let everybody know, okay, you, you, you might have been all stayed, you know, you were running shit down here, of course. But how different was when you made that bit of college and you got everybody else that was all staying in all college, keep coming in, coming in. What was the hard work you had to put in just to let them know, okay, man, look, this, this. That's a great question, Marlon. That's yeah. a great question. Yeah. Hey, my ass in the state, boy, that, you should start off with a great question. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I kind of I kind of came in. Well, first of all, let me rewind you back. You know, my, when I was a young, young man growing up, my uncles, they went to Morehouse. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I remember them having their trunk parties and, you know, stuff like that. So it was already in my mind of, you know what I'm saying? Okay, I'm 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 gonna go to college. But then once I start, you know, playing ball and getting good, you know, my big brother kind of, my brother Chester, you know what I'm saying? Because he was a stud, you know, he kind of put into my mind like, listen, man, everybody gonna have talent, you know what I'm saying? But you gotta work. Like, I know you think you good. You are, you know, you tell me this type of stuff. But you got to work, man. You can't let nobody outwork you. So when I got to college, you know, I'm already thinking, I got to outwork these boys. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I'm coming in. I'm, I'm a freshman. You know, I'm undersized. I was only about 205. You know, them boys out there, 230, 240. You know what I'm saying? So you already know. So, you know, I just kind of, I came in with the mentality of, you know, I already know, you know, nobody expected me to play as a freshman. You know what I'm saying? Right. They already think, you know, like, you see, as you were saying, you know, you come in, some guys automatically, like, they just accept, hey, I'm in a red shirt, and, you know, I'm chilling it. Nah. You know, my brother was like, listen, man, you got to make that 53-man roster. You know, I ain't know nothing about that. Like, you got to make that travel squad, man. You yes, know? sir. So I already came in with a with a different type of hunger than a lot of other guys, you know what I'm saying? No knock on them, but, you know, I, I was just laser focused. So I came in, you know, ready. So it wasn't a shock to me. You know, I started out like everybody else, third, fourth group. You know what I'm saying? But we doing drills and seven on seven. They're like, hey, boy, he's sticking. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, then it came to – because a lot of guys, they have the – like you said, them guys, they, a lot of guys all county. They call it all area in other places too. You know, they got the physical part of the game, but they don't have the mental. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't always the fastest or the strongest. So, you know, I used to always be like, I got to have that extra. You know what I'm saying? I, I got to right. – have a step away they going, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so I just really pay attention, read my keys, and you know, just just did the best with my opportunity. And so that so basically at the end of the day, if any people watching the mindset, you gotta have a strong mindset, man. And this gentleman had a, a strong mindset at a young age. He he had the guidance because uh, yeah. when you get guidance, man, you have to listen to it. A lot of people try to stray away from it and thank you preaching to them and all that stuff. But you were one of the ones that that listened to what you were told and applied it to your life. And and look where you are, man. Look at the accomplishments that you made. You was already for ready yeah. for the hard work, you know, not no 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 yeah. coming there to play games and stuff like that. So Mm-mm. that's that's Mm-mm. real big. What you got I going got, on now? I know you coaching now, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm at Deerfield, man. I'm yes, on sir. assistant head yeah. coach to uh, Tremaine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tremaine Hall is the head guy, you know what I'm saying? He's a good friend of mine for years, man. You know, I, I remember you know, spending the night at his house with Miss Stacy. She wake up, cook us breakfast. You know, to this day, she treat you know Tremaine's friends, you know, like her her kids. She you know, really what I mean? does, yeah. So, yeah, she just one of those people, man. So you know, Tremaine have that same type of infectious personality from his mom. So you know, he care and you know, he just man, it's surreal to be out there, you know, coaching. Coach. At my school, with my homeboys, I got my brother on the staff. I got Craig on the Chisholm on the staff. You know, right? Yeah, Julio Martinez, the OT. You know, it Mobley's uh, mm-hmm. uh, yeah executive head coach. He's just it's Jermaine Mobley, man. Yeah, Jermaine yeah, so Mobley. It's, it's, it's yeah, you unreal, Glace man. Glace. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Julio Martinez, OT. Yeah, yeah, Julio. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And, and Mo worked alongside him, so it just. You know, we already some competitive guys, so exactly. workouts be competitive, practice competitive, you know what I'm saying? And it's good teaching these kids, man, because at the end of the day, I want these kids to know we care. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. I look at like, like, you know, when I play like Coach Williams, you know what I'm saying? He was just the type of coach, man. Because I started out my freshman year, I went to Dillard, 
<clears throat> Dillard, my freshman, my sophomore year. Every time I see Coach Williams, man, anywhere this, man, you got to come home, you got to come home. So, you know, guys like him, man, where you know Coach Williams, a coach like that, love his city. You know what I'm saying? Love coaching us. Not, you know, I still have a relationship with him to this day, you know, because, you know, when you, when you meet genuine people, man, you know, you, you, you got to hold on. You got to, man. You got to. Exactly. You got to. He ain't just recruit you over there. You get over there and just throw you to the side. You know, like, <laughs> no, 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 nah, that. man. Nah, they do. <laughs> Listen, man. They do, hey. man. Yo, so quick, quick so story. Man. Hold on, but hold on, Molly. Quick story. Hey, so before okay. you go out, uh, I remember when I first came to Deerfield because I went to Coral Springs my freshman and sophomore yeah, yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember you, you, you made year. me feel welcome when I came to Deerfield. You was one of the first people that I met. And I remember you giving me yeah, the ropes man. and stuff on how to be, you know what I'm saying? Which, you know, I already had. You basically put more flavor on the flavor I already had. And I appreciated that. Yeah, I you understand. myself around. already. Yeah, I remember that, yeah. man. Yeah, so, man, I, I just wanted to bring that up. I never got a chance to thank you for that, bro, because I did take your advice, and it did help me, bro, through, through high school and that that level. On the field, being aggressive, taking something, not standing for the, you know what I'm saying? Having morals, got standing to. on your own 10, all that, bro. I just wanted to thank you for that. I never got a chance to tell you. I'm going to give you flowers hey, now. Hey, man, listen, man. <laughs> you got to understand, man. I, I appreciate that. And then, you know, as I was off and stuff, looking back, man, y'all boys just used to make me so proud, man, to see y'all guys out there. Y'all, it's like, I know that y'all boys, dad, I was like a big brother, but you know, like you played with my little brother. So, right. you know, I couldn't watch some of these games because I was <laughs> up in school. Yeah, so only games I would get would be some film I would get, man. But y'all boys and y'all made y'all run, man. Y'all, man, still to this oh, day, yeah, man. anybody listening, man, go on YouTube, man. Look at that 2002 Deerfield High School highlight, man. The boys do their thing hey, on there, man. I still hey, that watch that Cinderella to this day, run man. right there. Hey, yeah, man. Man, listen, man. Yeah. Trust me, man. It was, it was just, it just was so fulfilling to, you know, because I used to call home, call my brother stuff. I'm learning in college. I'm like, hey, Ma, listen, when that guard do this and do that, man, running there, smashing, man, he'll get back home, call me, and like, bro, it worked. I'm like, yeah, bro, man. Marcus so as I'm learning, I'm truth, telling bro. him, man, mm -hmm. yeah, man, trust me, man. The my, truth. like, for it's me, man, my little brother really always, first, my big brother, Chester, was always, uh, but my little brother, too, man, like, you know, playing Little League, you know, he's always quarterback, and that's just who he was. His mindset and his IQ is amazing, bro. I, I but mm -hmm. I, I, I was thankful to have to play against him. I never played with nobody like him as far as on my team with a mindset like mm -hmm. that. A selfish semi pro, Tommy Holloway. Yeah, but Tommy Holloway. Yeah, Tommy Marcus Holloway. Rich, deep, oh my yeah, god, man. man. But yeah, Marlon, my bad to cut you off, man. What you was about to ask? Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> no, because he kind of came into with, with the Cinderella run. So I'm like, by by y'all boys ready coaching and all that. Will y'all break the curse on Bill Phil winning the championship? Sure, listen, man. man. Listen. All oh, I okay, 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 okay. Okay, what's holding? Like, why why we haven't? It's like what, what we have not gotten listen, to that. Yet. Me, listen, me. <clears throat> I'm a big proponent on. I don't blame the kids. I blame the coaches, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Because I I'll give you an example. When we, this is my senior year, undefeated, you know what I'm saying? We, we up 14 zip. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's third quarter, we get the ball, we down on the goal line, it's fourth and goal from like the four. You know what I'm saying? Coaching, you kick a field goal. You're making a three possession game. You know what I'm saying? Well, we didn't do that. All type of crazy stuff happened. We ended up losing that game after being up 14 zip. Now, I'm just the type of, of, of player. You know, at, at that time, I was so mad, you know, but as you get older and you get around other coaches and you realize it's about the decisions being made at that top. That person making the decisions, he, he can't be flustered by stuff. He got to be, man. Focus, man. Like, I played for a guy in college, a legendary coach by the name of Bob Spool. He wasn't real up and down, man. You know, nah, man, you got to be laser focused because you got to remember, if you're the head guy, everybody's looking at you. Right. Players looking at you, the other coaches, the parents, the, the younger players that's little coming up to, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I feel like it, I blame coaching. You know, some people may take that the wrong way, but that's how I operate. I blame coaching. You have to make good decisions. You have to make sure your guys are prepared. Of course, the players got to make the plays, but you got to be the coach to put them in the position anyway. Yes, so, definitely. Long story short, man, that's what we here to do. We here to go win state because. I played, it, I played in Dillard, you know what I'm saying? I live in Miami. 
I coached at Stranahan for like four years. I even had to coach at Ely for one year to get on coaching with my man, Calvin Davis. Shout out to him. But, you know, I, I just learned over that time, man, so many guys are, you know, because they don't know where I'll be from or whatever. They're flipping a man deal if they have all that talent. You know what I'm saying? They don't never win one. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's, it, you know, and it's, it, both statements are true. Right. You have a lot of talent and haven't won one. But, you know, the follow-up to that is I feel like you got to have the coaches in there that care about the program first, care about the city and the community first. It can't be one or two guys. I got to be all the guys. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Start there. And then once you start there and, and build that love and, you know, camaraderie with the, with the community, because these, you know, a lot of kids is coming in, playing from different places where kids from Deerfield not getting a chance. Right. When we were good back in the day, man, it was, it was homegrown, brother. Yeah. It, it was yeah. Frank Gowdy. You know, it, it, it's Jimmy Overstreet. You know, it, it's yeah. Sancho Edwards. It's, it's guys that, that – like when I, I coach now and guys, coach, give me a ride home. I'm like, well, we used to walk to practice where you, boy, we walk further than you. You know, it just yeah. what it was, man. You know, so I feel like with, the, with, with us being homegrown on the staff and us really caring, and I swear, y'all, it, it pains me when I hear people say we never won one. I just feel like when we finally do, we're going to be a problem. Yeah, Why? Well, yeah, go man, ahead, Mom. Yeah, yeah, because I, I feel like right now, Supposed to have at least seven. <laughs> at that listen, moment, I, I mean, listen, man. All I say is, you know, <laughs> let, let, let's say if you rewind ten years back, you know, Shamanai wasn't a powerhouse like it is now. Now, nah, you right. know, I have so much respect for their program because one thing about them, Nod boys, they they'll go play anybody. You know what I'm saying? I, okay. I know they um the deep, defensive coordinator. I know him personally. You know he. Very competitive guy, Joe Ballard. You know, he does a great job in what he does with the program. You know, I actually learned some things from him. I, I talk football with him. So, you know, but like I said, you look years ago, Shamanad, like we played Shamanad with no powerhouse. We didn't know nothing about no Shamanad, man. But hey, Shamanad was like the homecoming game. Yeah, it was a stat game. Talk about him now. They Much can't. respect out there on that. Too. You, can, you know what I'm saying? So, and that, and that, you know what that comes with? That comes with great coaching. That comes with developing your players, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and building a tradition. You know, we already have a tradition at Deerfield, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, my uncles played at Deerfield in the 80s, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So, and my uncle Styles was defensive player of the year for Deerfield in like 1990, I want to say four or maybe five, three or, three or four, might have been three. You know, yeah. so the tradition at Deerfield, it's it there, man, you yeah, know what I'm run saying? Deep. It runs deep. So, you know, it's just, we just got to get over that hump. You know what I'm saying? And I really feel like with with guys from, from Deerfield on the staff, man, it's going to give us that extra little push to get over the top that right. we definitely okay. gonna need. You know what I'm saying? Because football is definitely an emotional game, man. That's just that's just what it is, man. And then, too, to, to add on to that, Nick, a lot of the uh, the teams that we had in the past, the strength and conditioning, the off-field stuff, the, the preseason stuff, that wasn't never yeah. a big thing. I remember being – and man, man, listen, you, you people used to skip weightlifting and being coach J class. Let's just keep it real. I guarantee <laughs> yeah, you that that's yeah, going on now. True. I guarantee you that that's going no, on. No, 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 no. And you but got see, other this was programs crazy. that but, wasn't wait, on that. Go no, no, I'm saying you yeah. got other programs that when you get deep yep. into the playoffs and stuff, them boys on that. They preseason yes, getting man. ready as a team. They they doing the, the calisthenics and the footwork drills and stuff. That wasn't never something that uh was applied to us like it should have been. And then also too. The coaching decisions that was made because we had a coach, me and shoot, me and Nick had the same coach all throughout my yeah. my two years I was there and his two years that he was there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. tell you, bro, trust me. So tell me, bro. It, it does <laughs> it, that does play a role, man. At the end of the day, when you got a bit talent against another bit talent, it's gonna come down to the mindset of the coaching. There you go, man. There you go, man. So there you, you know. go. So as as you being a coach, like. What would be more important? You knowing you got that player in college or that state championship? Man, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, I would say get the kids in school because that's, that's really what it's all about, man. A lot of us come from, you know, come from families where our parents don't got 20000 a semester for us to go nowhere like that. You know what I'm exactly. saying? So. You know, for me, you know, it, it's more of getting the players in school. Like I tell you, like I just had a kid, Omar Graham, uh, he played for me at uh, Stranahan. He came to me as a um, sophomore going to his junior year. He didn't have no offers nowhere, but 
And I already saw that kid was just a special talent. You know what I'm saying? So you put a special talent with a great work ethic, you know what I'm saying? And then also what people don't understand is that kid's dad is in his life. You got a father in your life, bro, it it helps you. You got to have some male guidance, you know what I'm saying? So Omar Senior, people talk about Omar Graham Jr., but he's a, you know, he's a junior because his dad. So his dad is in his life. So, you know, you just, it it just has to be a culmination of a lot of things, man. And then now you look at him now, he's at Florida State right now, living out his dream. That was his dream school to go play at Florida State. And that's what he's doing. You know, I feel like I helped him along the way. But, man, he, he was destined to go wherever he was because he was just that type of kid, great kid, you know. I mean, I yelled that. I think I might have yelled that a one time for something. And after that, this was like within the two years of me having him, you know what I'm saying? But I only yelled at him once. But I mean, I yell as a coach sometimes. You know, I'm emotional. Gotta but, get you your know, phone across. That's a great it, kid. It yeah, is. Man, so. And then it's, it's like being, being a coach, like, just be, just be honest, let everybody know. You ain't got that much connections to get somebody into a D one school like that, like like that, man, that's because okay. everybody love to so, say he ain't go to D one school. He can't be as good as you think he is. But man, little, little do you know, man, uh, got a couple connections, man. Where we put some things together, like we just okay. put some things together to you know to to you know. I mean, I let the cat out the bag to kind of facilitate. A school getting some our kid getting our kid an offer, you know what okay. I'm saying? But in the end, you know that kid that didn't that didn't matter enough for that kid to stay at Deerfield, you know what I'm saying? But you know okay. th- those types of things happen, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it's crazy, but I, I got some connections, man. But it's like when it comes to that, like I said, got to be a culmination of things. So even when they come with the <clears throat> the D1 connections, got to have those grades. That's the first thing those 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 scouts ask about grades. Number two thing they asked about, you know, you guys wouldn't even believe. They asked, how's his family like? Who does he live with? That stuff you know matters. what I'm saying? That, see what I'm saying? That, that type of stuff matters. So, you know what I'm saying? Uh, what kind of teammate is he? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I like to build the credibility up to where they're going to trust what I say because I'm not going to send them somebody who I, I know. Yeah, exactly. And I you know, they ain't going to do right. Don't mess up. And then now nah, that coach don't want to come back to this. Nah, we ain't doing, we ain't playing them type of game. Right? I mm-hmm. definitely agree. I definitely agree. I was just going to speak on that because sometimes you don't want to mess up your resources and connect, especially when they real special like that. That's a real special connection to have. And you have a kid that's actually willing and ready to go and you don't mess it up because you took the chance on somebody that was lacking in maybe one area that messed up the whole thing. Yeah. Everything was there, but just that one area that was important didn't meet yeah. the requirements. And now it's egg on your face. And you know, that, yeah. that's that's not just yeah. football, but anything. You got a, a good connect. If you got a good mindset, you don't want to play games like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, Nick, I, I'm okay. pretty sure, like, like you got experience that you can tell right now. If a okay. kid, if a kid has it, you'll know he has it. But what do, you, what would you say to a kid that okay, he's trying, but you know he don't have it? Well, it, it's it's <laughs> difficult because you know, so, I'm gonna be honest, man. Some some kids, some people may not think they have it. You know what I'm saying? When they do have it, because the first thing I look for is is dog. You know what I'm saying? Which I mean, like, am, am I am I gonna, you know what I'm saying? Uh, am I gonna allow this man to do what he want to do to me, or am I gonna be like, nah, bro, he's not gonna block me? You know what I'm saying? You know, it's it just that's what I look for first. And a lot of times, guys be being played out of position. You know, <laughs> you have kids. So I play wide receiver. I, no, you don't. You, you don't. <laughs> I. I you know, I try to have them realistic conversations with them. You know what I'm saying? I, I, you know, kids pull me to the side. Coach, coach, how can I get more reps? And I ask them, are you, you better than the guy in front of you? If you're not better than the guy in front of you, I would be doing the team a disservice to put you in because I like you. Because I like all the kids. I, I love them all. Okay. You know, but it's my job to the best product on the field. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, defensively, I'm, I'm a defensive guy. You know, I feel like, People can't score, they can't win. And then on top of that, we can score on defense. We can get interception, we can get fumbles, we can get punt return, whatever. But we can, we can, we don't even need the offense. We can win the game ourselves. And that's the type of mentality that, you know, I, I build with my defensive guys. You know, we, you know, offense, 
No, I mean, you play it right yeah. back. You guys are going to fumble and stuff. Yeah. You know, but Go turn over. how's that helping us if Lummy fumble, he come out the field and I say something slick to him? Now Lummy not even think about the fumble that he just had. He's mad with me because I, I disrespect him and I really, I should never even said that. You know what I'm saying? So right. I don't play them type of games. I'm, I'll never get off the game and be like, oh man, the offense was no, no, no. We, we <laughs> win together. But the boys say we ride together, we die together. Ride together. Bad That's boys right. for life. Come and on, the, man. Right. And, and the way that I go, you you always want to uh make an assessment anyway, so you know just like Nick said, what what area they need to be in and what lane they need to be in, because you got there some you good go. parents that hey, my son is a a running back. My uh, son, listen, for one, you, you need to come out to the practice. That way you can get an uh, assessment for yourself. <laughs> Full, uh, so there you go. You see the Why my son ain't uh, playing? Come exactly. to because kids, <laughs> and not just kids, maybe the high school kids, man, they'll come home and tell their parents they did great in practice. They know they ain't do a goddamn thing. Then when it comes game time, then when it comes game time, they ain't getting in the game. They don't lie all week. And now the parents <laughs> mad at the coaches. Now the parents mad with me. <laughs> yeah. But the, 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 the thing I don't understand is when they go home and say, oh, I ain't getting a chance. Boy, that ain't true because I'm, I'm watching. I watch one on ones. I watch in the like. I even right now I coach the linebackers, so I we got a I get a full view of them every day. Yeah, man. So you know when kids say they don't get a chance, that that that's BS because I give everybody a chance. It's just I know what it's supposed to look like. I give you an example. When I first came out there to Deerfield, we were doing workouts. I saw a kid named Tyrion Irving. Mm-hmm. Right, doing run, weight room running and stuff. I told Julio Marti that's there. I said this right here. This is all, this is exactly what I'm looking for. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I, I you know what it, it, it slashes. You know what I'm saying? He's not as as big as some colleges want him to be, but like I'm telling him, man, just keep grinding because they're looking for football players. So keep being a football player. And like I tell all my guys, you know, you can only go to one school. You know That's what I'm it. saying? The, the part right. of the reason I went to Eastern Illinois is because that was the first school to come. Came to my, my grandma house, ate dinner with us, spoke with us. And you know what I'm saying? Offered me my first offer. You know what I'm saying? I had offers from other places, but you know, I, I really felt I felt the love from them boys, and you know, it, I locked yeah. in with them boys. Yeah, so I, I was good. You know, I, if I had to choose ten more times, I'd choose the same thing. I go play for the same coach in the same city, and hopefully, I can meet the same guys. You know what I'm saying? Because one of my best friends, I, I talk, we talk every day, every day, every morning. You know what I'm saying? We both work a job where we up early in the morning, so we we talk every morning. You know what I'm saying? So. That kind of what it did about, which goes back to your point before, where I'd rather win a state championship or send the guys to college. Man, send them to college, man. Let, let them see that world, man. Cause yeah. Deal feeling, but this big. It- Hold on, guys. Got some problems. Hold on one second. I don't know if you can hear me or not. Hold on one second. Yeah. But what if. But where they play is it? Hey, where I'm sorry. Hey, I'm sorry about that, man. I had some little technical difficulties. You was Difficult, talking yeah. about your um the your answer in response to state championship. Yeah, I didn't hear the moment. Yeah, I didn't, yeah. Yeah. I didn't, yeah, I, I didn't get none of that on the recording, so that's why I was bringing it back up. Again. Yeah, I hit well, him with the question where it's like, okay, you know, we we got all these players on college on Saturdays and NFL. Mm-hmm. They love to say, okay, they didn't win the state championship, but then you got schools that win all these state championships. Ain't sending they, nobody where nowhere. Players where they play is it? There you go. There you go, man. Yeah. So to me, that's the key, man, is sending these guys off to school, man, so they get the experience in life, man. Like, you know, I went to uh, East Illinois, which is in Charleston, Illinois, but, man, 40 minutes away was Champaign, 45 minutes was Terre Haute, hour and a half was Indianapolis, three hours was Chicago, two and a half hours was St. Louis. So, you know, you got that whole, you know, we down here at the crib, you got to drive seven hours to go see anybody. Well, to that, man, it's just right around you. So it just mm-hmm. be a good experience. You know, they talk different, they eat different. You know, it's just, it's just totally different. What and it's the, what, what really mindset being the man bro at that time in college and then being around all those type of amenities and you know what i'm saying just that college experience because it's different for high school especially when you you just being on the football team but being the man on the football team bro how was that how was your mindset at the time were you like humble to all of the experience so you just took it in Mm -hmm. like how was that i mean most deaf man i played i played uh 
I played with uh, college three years with Tony Romo. So, okay. you know, even though I was a man, you know, Romo, was, <laughs> <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Right, right. I mean, it's, it's, you know, you look at old articles, it's me and him, but, you know, they always going to love the offensive guys. And plus, Tony was special, man. So, mm-hmm. you know, it, and plus, like, a lot of the, the guys who recruited the younger guys on us, you know, uh, Ben Brown, you know, he went to Plantation. I played high school with his brother Sam at Dilla. I played against him as well. So, you know, knowing all them young guys, I, I can't I can't act like I'm above them. You right, know what I'm saying? That's just not how I'm wired. You know what I'm saying? Even like like you said, when I met you, you know, it ain't my job to say I'm here. I'm, nah, man, it's, hey, man, we family, man. This is how you do it, man. You know what I'm saying? Always, I always felt like it was my job to to be, you know, be straight with, you know, even the younger guys. Like, I know all of them. Man, I wouldn't call them scrubs, but all the guys that really didn't play, I played high school and college with. Man, ask them boys. I know all them boys. That's how I was. Dap them all up. Don't, don't, I don't think I'm better than them boys. Because when you, everybody, everybody the same, man. Everybody the same. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I may have a little more talent or may catch on a little quicker, but that don't mean you, you're not good. You're still a good player. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I, I, I respect, like I tell the kids, every kid that come out, I respect you coming out here. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody was their first day at one point. You know what I'm saying? It take right. that courage to get out there, dog. So I I, I respect that. So it's kind of how I carry myself, man. I, you know, I, I I just don't really think I'm better than other people because we all the same, man. You gotta have that that yeah, genuine yeah, yeah. love. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Decency, you know what I'm saying? Like even with like you know Marlon, man. I know Marlon since we was jits. We used to have to go to church together, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hey, hey, you me too. I was always around y'all. You know, yeah, man. Yeah, man. That's it, yeah. It was always love, you know what I'm saying? Always. You know, and never know nothing crazy, no disrespect, no matter that, man. Yeah, I seen you. He was like, yeah, man, yeah, nigga, I raised you. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, man, it's all love, man. Trust man. That's why when y'all guys hit me up about doing the podcast, man, most definitely, man. Yeah, man, we we, we so uh, thankful to have you on, bro. Uh, This is what we've been doing for a while. Me and Marlon, we... We always tell all our guests we're supposed to be and had it going. We normally talk about uh, uh, indie wrestlers and stuff like that. I don't yeah, know yeah, if yeah. you're into wrestling. If you are, we got Not gotta... really. I, you know, okay. I'm old so, school, you know, right, right. old. But I've been saying Marlon the other. Yeah, he just go in the back. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Marlon, sure. Marlon go all the way back. I go all the way man. back. Marlon, yeah, yeah, Marlon yeah, is a good when it was, yeah. And like I said, man, hey, me and Lummy, we've been talking about God knows when we want to do some shit like this. And it's yeah, just yeah. like, you know what, let's... You know, let's let's do it. Before, hey. yeah, you were busy. I was busy. I had all the stuff. But, like, it's like, hey, listen, let's get it. But you and, know, you know, right. and, and when we get people on here, you know, they people watching. You get what I'm saying? Right. You, sure. don't, you, don't, think, you don't think nobody watching, but somebody watching. <laughs> yeah, right, Trust man. me, man. Right, yeah, that's, that's how we, that's how we work around, around here, yeah. Planet. So, well, we, uh, so we, I got go my ahead, little Marlon. top five. I got yeah, my little top five. Yeah, because we got five, five minutes and 23 seconds yeah. left. Yeah, I know you're going to okay. talk. Woo. So let everybody know the five things you look for in a complete player. In a complete – oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, like I told you first thing, that dog. That dog, first thing. Great question. Uh, second thing, you, you got to work hard. You know what I'm saying? You got to be a hard worker. You know, yeah. Uh, I just look at it as, especially our best player. I always tell our best players, our best players, you got to be our hardest worker because everybody looking at you, young boys looking up to you. You know what I'm saying? It's just how it operates. Especially when you get to that next level, you'll see the 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 best of the best. They bust they behind. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, number three, I look at are they a good teammate? You know what I'm saying? Got to be a good teammate. You know what I'm saying? You got to be. It's not all about you. You know what I'm saying? Um, Four, I would say, um, be coachable. You know what I'm saying? Don't take stuff so personal. You know what I'm saying? Don't don't take it personal. And uh, the fifth thing, I would say, just consistent. You know, be very consistent. Well, you know, know know what you're supposed to do, and, and always be there to do it. And then you you'll always be you'll always be in a good position. Okay. And, and another thing I want to say too. That's why people tell um um. 
play sports like football because if you look at it, the same situations that you have in football, you have in life. You're not always you have gonna life, be best player. You're not always going to be on top. Sometimes you'll be introduced to stuff that you never did before, but if you rep it yep. and you do repetitions, you'll become great at it. It all there reflects you into your life when you become an adult, but you don't really realize and understand that. Well, I ain't going to yeah. speak and say everybody, but the majority yeah. of athletes, I'm lot of they don't yeah. have that mindset to know that, but it's all life mm -hmm. lessons. And so... Yeah. When I, I know you coach Nick, because when I coach Little League, I kind of implement that. I don't want to just be a coach. I want to also make you guys into a young gentleman, giving you them little yes, life sir. lessons, being on the phone late at night when you know you got practice in the morning, you want to <laughs> stay home when you know you need to go out of town to that camp. You need to take your ass home. Stuff like that. Gotta that go, man. Yeah. Because sure. I missed out on certain experiences like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I man. Had we all did, man. Yeah, you know. So. After them. Yeah, man. It happens, man. We live, we live and we learn, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? They always say we, we product of our environment. I love that, man. I love being from Deerfield, small city where, you know, everybody know everybody, the Jenkins yeah, and the Strawberries and the Rexes <laughs> and, you know what I'm saying? And, like, Rod Hope and them boys. You know, I remember them them boys was my, my basketball coach at Westside. You know, we used to have <laughs> basketball league. Like, it's, it's just a, a family type community, man. And I, and I love being proud of it, man. You know, and I learned from Coach Williams, man. Let them know where you're from, man. Oh, no matter where you go, man, let them know you're from this. Yeah, man. Uh, I, always, I definitely do, yeah. I always is. repping, man. As we're supposed mm -hmm. to do, man. So, so Nick, what's your what's your uh, future plans? Like, what do you see yourself in five years? You trying to take coaching to the next level uh, as far as called collegiate or, or pro? Because I, I, I feel you can do it, but I ain't going to say I think. I feel you can do it, bro. Yeah, he can. He can. He can, man. I'll be saying that. You're in a great right settings uh, right now with the coaching staff you have. Uh, Tremaine got all the, you know what I'm saying? Tremaine Hall does a tremendous job. He was already doing it in Ohio. Absolutely. And implementing mm -hmm. that, that's why the, the staff y'all have, everything is ready, set to go. So, but with, with that, I know it's going to come publicity and stuff like that. So, you going to use that to fuel yourself to take it to the next level coaching? Or you? <laughs> I don't know, man. It's just... Uh... To be honest, right now I'm really, I'm really so focused on because uh, we just took over at Deerfield. And so so you many people right now. Fail. So you know I'm kind of lazy in on that, but you know I, 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 I like coaching. I, I mean I love coaching. So you know I'm, I'm not gonna say I won't try to go to the next level if, if a, a great opportunity presents itself. You know who's to say? You know what I'm saying? But right now I'm just really focused at Deerfield, man. I, you know I. People, man, you drive from Miami every day. Man, it's 25 miles. That ain't nothing. Come on, man. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, worth, it's worth that <laughs> for my city. You know what I'm saying? Right, like, right. people from Broward, well, Miami so far, it's really right up the street. But, it is. You know, it just, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm just, I, I'm probably locked in right now with at, at Deerfield, you know what I'm saying, at least for a couple of years, maybe at least two, three years, something like right. that. But, you know, who's to say, man, you know? Nick, man, I, I really appreciate you coming on the show. I know you could have oh, been yeah, doing yeah, other yeah, stuff. Yeah, so on, we yeah. really appreciate you. We we like in the less than a minute countdown, so I'm just getting everything. Yeah, yeah, we could have we could have went all night. Man. Yeah, man. <laughs> uh, we definitely want to have you back on again. Um, spread the word mm -hmm. that we that we doing our thing on here. You know what I'm saying? We trying to gradually move up as well. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, and I'm um. Put it on Facebook and stuff, man. I'm, yes, I'm sir, gonna man, share it. I'm a Twitter and all that, man. Um, if you if whatever information you got, Nick, um, if you want people to reach out to you, like if you want to start like a linebacker camp or anything you got in mind, um, I don't got your contact. If you can send it to Marlon, I can put it in the description. Rather sure. than be in okay. the video, I can always add it in when you get ready. And um, right. you know, this, it's, it's, it. it'll be on YouTube, so it's timeless. You can always go to this video right. and share it and say, hey.